that guidance is omnipresent, ever ready to guide and guard us. Opening our minds and hearts to guidance is an act of will. We are willing to be guided, and guided we will be. Can I have guidance? We come to ask, and a flow of guidance comes to us. Listening, writing it out, we may find ourselves surprised by the ease with which it appears. Who told us guidance would be difficult to access? I have found that receiving guidance is surprisingly easy and natural. The more we practice asking for guidance, the more normal it seems. We find ourselves relaxing. We begin to trust the flow of guidance and further guidance comes to us. Do not worry that you're off kilter. We are tutored. Instead, trust. Pen in hand, we transcribe the, the guidance we are given. Better than merely remembering, we write out our direction. Now we're able to read and reread our guidance. The words on the page sink into our psyche. We find ourselves led gently and well. Over time, seeking guidance at all turns, we come to trust our higher power. Guidance that seems mysterious or abstract proves itself to be, in cozy retrospect, accurate and helpful. And it's a rarity for guidance to seem obscure. Most often, it is simple and direct. Can I have guidance? We pray, and the prayer is answered promptly. You are led carefully and well, we are told, and then the guidance gets more specific. In my case, I am talked to about my writing. Write about hope. Write about control. I am tutored, and so when I obey the guidance, I am rewarded with writing of strength and clarity. Write. Right now. I am sometimes urged when I am feeling resistance, not wanting to trust my guidance. Because sometimes I need to be told, resist your resistance. And so I do. And when I do, I am given work with authenticity and power. Do not imagine you are abandoned. Guidance scolded me yesterday when I said, yes, feeling abandoned. We are at your side always. And who is this mysterious we? I have come to think simply of them as higher forces. I imagine myself talked to by great and benevolent beings. Angels? Who knows? They are content to remain anonymous. Do not doubt our goodness, they remind me, faced with my occasional skepticism. This admonition casts me back through my years of guidance, years in which the guidance proved itself good. I have journal after journal filled with benevolent guidance. There is no error in your path, the entries assure me, adding this final comforting thought, Julia, all is well. My phone rings. The caller is my fellow writer, Jacob Nordby. It's been for him a tumultuous day. His young daughter, Megan, has moved out into a place of her own. In her absence, his house feels abruptly empty. Used to being a hands-on parent, Jacob now laments, I'll miss my weird little friend. I sympathize recalling how it felt when my own daughter, Domenica, flew the nest. That was 20 years ago, and the memory still stings. I start my book on guidance, I tell Jacob, shifting the conversation to less volatile ground. It's certainly timely, Jacob responds. I think people could really benefit from using guidance right now. Maybe your book will nudge them into trying it, he speculates. That'd be great, I respond, thinking about Jacob's heartfelt wish may also be guided, giving me just the encouragement I need. As we ask for guidance, we are, all, we are well and carefully led. We find our wishes, hopes, and desires being met by the wishes, hopes, and desires of others. Increasingly, we find ourselves to be a worker among workers, a friend among friends. Listening to our guidance, obeying its cues, we have an experience of harmony. Guidance teaches us to be an integral part of a larger whole. We experience synchronicity, the delightful intermeshing of our dreams and plans with the plans and dreams of the universe acting benevolently on our behalf. Our luck improves and we come to count on it. We are ever more often in the right place at the right time. Chance encounters come to be seen as not chance at all, rather as the deliberate action of the universe on our behalf. Over time, working with our guidance, we become increasingly cooperative. We're led in positive directions, the precise directions the universe intends. We have a sense of interlocking with the great and glorious gears of destiny. Our guidance gives us cues and we increasingly obey those cues, moving in unexpected directions as we are told. 
Our hunch or intuition becomes a working part of our mind. We come to, to depend on it, stepping a step at a time as it directs. What's next? We may often query, listening for the subtle lead we are to follow. As we ask to be led, we are led. Seeking guidance, we are guided. Right for guidance. When I teach, I am often met with questions about what to ask for guidance on. The short answer is anything and everything. A sure way to discover topics you might benefit from asking for guidance on is to do one of the, my favorite exercises, the wish list. Quickly fill in the following sentences. I wish, 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 I wish. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I most especially wish. Look back at your list. Any of the topics you just listed are fertile ground for guidance.